Let's get more now with our next guest. She is taking the opposite view. She's not concerned with the outlook for equities. Janet Tsang is Emerging Markets and APAC Equities Investment Specialist at JP Morgan Asset Management. Great to have you with us, Janet. Why not concerned? Well, I think, yeah, certainly there are a lot of um, uncertainties in the market, but at the end of the day, uh, everything comes with a price. So if you look at the fundamental of the market, we're talking about a very low PE level, like MSI Asia X Japan is just at 11 times. And our own proprietary expected return framework is also at a very high level at uh, like 17 or 18 percent. So that uh, tells us that the risk reward from here is actually very attractive a lot of people saying as well don't potentially look to the bond market for what happens next but we're looking very much at the rotation here too and that leads us to the question of the day that we are asking from our M Live team and that is how far can some of this value to growth rotation run yeah well um, if you look at the history uh, well Growth, growth sectors have, have a very uh, strong run over the past many years because of the low interest rate. Um, and then now we are seeing a, a change in the interest rate regime. So uh, that should provide a further tailwind for value stocks to do better. And in fact, if you look at some of the sectors within the so-called value, uh, some of them are in the financial uh, sector. So um, these banks, actually, they will benefit from a high interest rate environment uh, as they will have a higher uh, net interest margin, uh, etc. So I think ultimately uh, we are seeing improving uh, profitability in some of the uh, value sectors. So we do believe that some of the value stocks uh, may have uh, further uh, to go. All right. What, what Janet, I mean, this brings me nicely to this other part. Okay, if you're going towards uh, high-yielding equities, then you're going to get into the more defensive realms of uh, the market. Now, uh, the point I want to make here is, it, is this the sort of idea of not picking, let's say, the gold miner, but the picks and shovels? Or if you have, if you like tech, for instance, you go for the tech hardware uh, side of things here. Right. I think uh, income investing is not just talking about buying the highest dividend paying uh, stocks. Um, to us, there are also many different sectors that we can choose from uh, for uh, income strategy. Um, actually, if you look at the broader uh, index, uh, we're talking about around 3% dividend yield. But across many different sectors, um, say, for example, in the value sectors, you can also find uh, financials offering both a uh, upside capital due to high interest rate and also decent yield. And then moving to the what we call the quality at reasonable yield, i.e. some of the tech hardware names, while the yield level may not be extremely high, but they can still offer you a decent like 3-4% with the growth potential. And then finally, of course, we'll have some uh, defensive, uh, classic defensive, like uh, Toro or Telecom, and some of them are actually bond proxies, um, say for example, REITs, etc. So I think um, we should not say dividend uh, investing is uh, equals to defensive uh, stocks only, but then we can also pay income opportunities across many sectors. So the key is really to diversify. So how does a high inflationary environment uh, affect your stock selection? Mm. Right. I think, uh, obviously, from a bottom-up perspective, uh, we have to analyze the impact of high inflation on the companies. So say, for example, uh, we can identify the winners and the potential losers. So for winners, of course, some of the financials, particularly those banks, uh, which uh, have their interest rate linked to the global rate or US rate, um, uh, that will have a uh, more direct impact, positive impact. Um, so they, are the, they can be the winners. Uh, but then on the other hand, uh, some of the consumer companies, we have to assess whether they are strong enough to pass on the higher input costs to the to the uh, end clients. Um, so I think we just need to look at the real impact to the company's earnings. And the key is really to, um, to focus on the quality companies. And for consumer companies, yeah. look for those with, which have a strong uh, brand power and, um, and, uh, and good 
product makes and good cost control. So I think ultimately mm -hmm. high inflation is not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, we just need to find yeah. the winners. Jenna, almost out of time, just quickly wanted to ask you your thoughts, though, about the lockdowns in China, the concerns of a potential countrywide lockdown and how that complicates things when you're seeing a lot of the rest of Asia opening up. Right. Um, so obviously we have more news on the lockdown in China, but we still believe that um, the impact should be temporary, uh, although this time maybe slightly longer than, than past episodes. But overall, we believe that policy put is now in place in China, whether it's uh, monetary or fiscal or less administrative uh, actions. So I think overall, um, we just want to focus on the valuations and the growth trajectory of some of the structural winners.